Is your student home for the summer and looking for some fun activities to participate in? Are you available to the resources available to you through your local library? I'm your host, Jenny Rojanasatian, and today I'll be interviewing Ash Kuntz, who is the STEM Services Manager for NCW Libraries. I simply cannot say enough good things about our local library system and the amazing resources they provide. But in doing research for the show, I've become even more impressed. NCW Libraries has served Chelan, Douglas, Ferry, Grant, and Okanagan counties since 1960. And they have a 14,000 square mile service area, which is roughly the size of Massachusetts and Connecticut combined, making them geographically the largest library district we have in Washington state. In addition to operating the largest geographic area, they operate 30 community libraries and provide a mail order library and two bookmobiles for the most rural residents. That's a pretty busy team. Now in today's episode, Ash Coons is really gonna help us dive into STEM services and some summer programs. But I also wanna plug that the library website provides library cardholders with access to eBooks, digital audiobooks, as well as a number of online resources, including the New York Times, Consumer Reports, and Rosetta Stone. So whether you have a youth at home or you're looking for some learning, the libraries is a great place to turn to. Don't go far, we'll be right back on air with our first guest. And welcome to Networked. I'm excited to introduce our guest for today's episode, Ash Kuntz, NCW Libraries. So fun to have you on air. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, we were talking offline that we have uh, some mutual people in common, but this is the first time we've really gotten to sit down and yes. go into your background. So very excited about that. Um, we're going to talk about the library, STEM activities. But first, I'd love to start with you. Um, tell are, are you a local, Ash? I am a local. Okay, yes. awesome. So I grew up in the Valley, um, and then I moved away for school mm -hmm. and other adventures for about 15 years, yeah. and I moved back four years ago. Um, but my, my background is in education. Okay. I have a master's in education, and I've been teaching mostly in the environmental education field for about 10 years. Okay. Um, and then we've transitioned into the, the STEM program mm -hmm. at, at NCW Libraries. Um, that draws a lot on that science background. Wonderful. So uh, a master's of education in environmental education and focus mm -hmm. on social justice. Tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, where you were teaching and uh, what projects you're working on before you came back to the area. Yeah. Um, so I actually started out working for the Park Service in Arizona. Okay. Um, and I was doing environmental education and guiding out there. Um, and then it it's really hard to get a permanent job in the park service. And so yeah. I went and got my master's degree from Bellingham, okay. uh, Western Washington University. Yeah. And so I served a lot in that Skagit Valley area. Um, and a lot of that was how do we get students into the outdoors to recognize the value that we have um, with environmental justice specifically, because a lot of the folks that are most impacted by climate change are the mm. farthest from justice. Mm. And, you know, we take advantage or, you know, we forget how lucky we are to have all these rich natural resources around yeah. us. Um, and, it, you know, I've been hearing over the years, it is a big equity thing that a lot of youth don't even get exposed to tap into yeah. what's in our backyard. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of really cool organizations here in the Valley that we've even partnered with as the library yeah. um, that get people outdoors. Like one of the things that we've done is snow school where we take kids out in the winter and we teach them about snow science, but they get to snowshoe for the first time, a lot of them in their lives, which is, I think, amazing. Yeah, I think it's really cool that the library is so innovative and not just looking at programs from a traditional book lens. Yes. It's the exploration yes. and activities. So let's, let's talk a little bit about the library because it is massive. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the organization, which has been rebranded as well. It has been. Yeah. Okay. So we're now NCW Libraries. Um, we were North Central Regional Libraries, or our NCRL. Yes. Um, and part of that rebranding was that it is more representative of the people that we serve in North Central Washington. Mm -hmm. um, but we serve a geographical region of almost 14 and a half uh, thousand square miles. Yeah. 
Um, so it's roughly the size of Connecticut and Massachusetts combined. That's, that's and, and crazy <laughs> to think about. I mean, our yeah. state is big, but then that service area. Yeah. And really small communities. Really small communities. Across that service area. We're a very rural service oriented library. Yeah. We have 30 branches or 30 locations throughout that region. We serve uh, Ferry, Grant, Chelan, Douglas, and Okanagan counties. And we have 30 branches. So all the way up to the Canadian border. Yep. Um, and then what is what do the services look like at those at those libraries? Is it is it the same systems, different? So we have a lot of the same core services that we okay. offer. Um, so our collection is a rotating collection, which means mm. that if you put a book on hold in Curlew and it's in Wenatchee, it'll get driven up to you for pick up there. Okay. Um, we also have a mail order library, and it's like a pretty innovative and one of the few ones la left. Mm -hmm. um, but so if you are housebound or unable to get out, we'll actually mail you our books. That's really cool. I think about seniors who may not um, mm -hmm. uh, be as mobile and still deserve access. Absolutely. To resources yeah. um, or uh, people, you know, transportation, gas. That's those are huge yeah. um, costs right now. Yes. Um, and not also accessible to everyone. Yes. Yeah. Um, online though, there's also services. Yeah, so we have a really large digital resources. So not only okay. do we have our physical books and physical DVDs, yeah. we have a series of um, eBooks and actually magazines that you can check out, um, audiobooks, and then even on top of those resources, we have learning opportunities, we have tutoring help, uh, we have Rosetta Stone yeah. that you can get, yeah. you can learn a language, yeah. um, all on our library like website. And how do how does someone get access? Yeah. What are the requirements? To... You have to be a resident okay. or live in the area okay. um, within those five counties. Yep. Um, and then all you need to do is you have to go into a library to get the card, but okay. you have to bring photo ID and then proof of address if your ID it doesn't have that on it. Okay. Um, and that's it. And that's it. And then you can tap into all the services. All of those resources. Yeah. And then you also do a ton of programming. Yeah. And we're gonna really dive in in a few minutes into the STEM programming, but let's mm -hmm. talk about, you know, holistically, it's really learning for all ages, right? Yes, and our mission is to connect um, the residents of North Central Washington to learning opportunities and resources um, so that we can have a robust community. Um, so a lot of our programming um, with our younger kids is about literacy and we do story mm -hmm. times in our branches um, and we have a virtual one as well that you can access on Zoom from home. Yeah. Um, and it's reading and finger play and singing and like all of this fun stuff with kids. Um, but then on top of that, we take a look at what our our individual communities are asking for and provide them with um, opportunities to engage with each other, to engage in learning opportunities and to just have access to like skills that they might not normally have. Yeah. The, the libraries did a lot during this pandemic the last two years online. Yes. And still bringing um, a lot of rich content. I was also thinking about, I can't think of some of the names, but you've also brought in authors and speakers yeah. into a Zoom platform because yes. you couldn't hold an auditorium. Yeah. We oftentimes partner with Humanities Washington. Okay. Um, and they have really good education series that um, are experts in their field and they'll come and speak. And we do some of those virtually. Um, and then we've had different author series of People have written books that we just want to talk to. So that we, yeah. yeah. Hear their story <laughs> exactly. and insights. Exactly. Yeah, which is really cool. Um, well, we have to head out to a commercial break, but when we get back, we're going to really dive into the STEM part, um, which I'm excited about to focus on. So don't go too far. Well, welcome back to the second half of Networked. I'm on air today with Ash Koontz from NCW Libraries. We have been talking about the vast region the library supports yes. and how diverse it is. But now I'm really excited to dive into STEM. Uh -huh. um, and Ash, maybe before we even talk about STEM programs, can you help set up for the audience what is STEM education? Uh, yes. <laughs> STEM is science, technology, engineering, and math. Yeah. And, um, you know, what excites you about STEM programming? Uh, for me, it's yeah. all about these critical thinking skills. And, mm. like, it can be, like, curiosity-inducing and collaborative. And you just really get to kind of find your own strengths and really explore and dive into those. 
I, I love that you highlighted the the critical thinking skills because I think when people see STEM, it's something the Tech Alliance is really passionate about, they think we've always taught science. We've yeah. always taught math. So what is yeah. like what is so special? But it's really that integration um, into problem solving. Yeah. And learning how to fail. Yes. Because we have such a diverse and dynamic world where things are scaling faster than we can teach them. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And so much, so many of the like the problems that we have are not a single disciplinary issue. Mm. Like when you're talking about education, you talk about science or biology or computer science. Like all of these things are coming together in the problems that we're seeing, or the like mm. solutions that we need to find. And it's mm. a multidisciplinary, integrated approach that's yeah. needed. Yeah. So we need to have youth and adults be able to uh, apply STEM mm -hmm. <laughs> into those fields. <laughs> So why has the library invested in having a STEM department? Yeah, so it actually started in 2016 okay. um, through a number of grants that were awarded to us um, for innovative public access to technology. Okay. Um, and there was such a positive response with that um, program that we chose in 2017 to make it a permanent part of our system. Yeah. Um, and so we have started staffing programs that um, enhance and engage uh, opportunities for students to learn STEM um, mm -hmm. outside of school in a more casual, yeah. fun uh, kind of way. And you've got the education background, mm -hmm. but when people are coming into the libraries, it's less about getting an A and yes. doing the curriculum. Yeah. It's the exploration, right? Absolutely. Okay. Now you're a small but mighty team. Yes. <laughs> okay. Team of two. Yes. And tell me um, a little bit about all the different programs and, and types of programs your you and your team do. Yeah. Um, so it's definitely been a bit of a journey and we've okay. changed throughout the years and kind of the focus that we have each year. Um, but we have done things from robotics with like Lego robotics um, and Ozobots, which are coding through markers. So you don't even need a computer for that. They're um, really fun too. They're really fun. It's got a good draw. Or adults, I would say. Yes. So yes. This is very engaging for adults as well. Yes. Okay. Um, as a lot of our focus for a long time had been on like after school age programs okay. or going into schools. Yeah. Um, and now school systems seem to have a little bit more robust STEM programs themselves. And so we're focusing a lot more on like that after school and like play engagement and learning. Um, but we're also working really hard to find opportunities for adults to yeah. engage with. Yeah. Um, a few years ago, we started a series called Bots and Brews, okay. where we would take robots to different breweries across mm -hmm. our region, and adults could experiment with robotics yeah. themselves. Yeah. Um, I think that's so cool, and I think it's really important to highlight STEM to adults because obviously we want them to support STEM education efforts, yes. support our libraries in STEM, and then know that those pathways exist for their kids or their nieces mm -hmm. or nephews or coworkers' kids. Yeah. Right. That awareness is so yes. is so important. Um, now you, again, going back to programs, sorry, yeah. we got off the road there. What are some <laughs> of the things you guys are doing this summer? Um, so we, uh, are doing a summer science show, Okay. which is, uh, we're going to have, we're going to go to every single branch or every location in person. Um, and we're going to bring some rockets that are water and air pressure based. Okay. There is no fire. Okay. I want to be very clear about that. Um, I'm sure the environmental justice side of you, <laughs> park and former parks professionals, yes. like yes. no fire. Well, yes. As well as like our yeah. recent history of right. wildfires. Yes. Yeah. Um, and so we're going to talk a little bit about, because our summer program this year is okay. read beyond the beaten path. And so we're going to, mm. we're transitioning that for the science part and to explore beyond the beaten path. Okay. So with rockets, we're going to dive into a little bit of wildlife biology and do oh. some animal tracking activities yeah. uh, and then some geology with geodes. So you got to smash open a geode. geode yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then so like those are really fun activities. But on top of that, talking about like these are all careers that mm. also use STEM. Um, like with wildlife biologists that use GIS mapping and a lot of them are using drones now to yeah. track wildlife yeah. um, with rockets, aerospace engineering and like flight mechanics and all of this fun stuff. They're all really fun things that are career paths. Yeah. 
I, I, I love the connection into um, career pathways. And, you know, what the audience doesn't know is Ash and I also serve together on the leadership team for the Apple STEM Network, yeah. which is a collective impact model of educators, business professionals, nonprofits, um, higher ed and K-12 to support STEM pathways, yeah. which is all tying back to careers. Yes. Right? Um, so thank you for your service. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. The, thank you for yours. Yeah. <laughs> on the STEM Network as well. But um, it's really cool that you, you're really thinking big as you build that program, not just like the activity. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Has a much deeper meaning than just the rocket yes. itself. Yes. And providing a fun opportunity. Yes. But with that fun is the highlighted part because mm. during the summer, you know, kids don't want to come in and ha have to work on like a report or a paper. Yeah. So like, how do we make it really fun, but have that like kind of in the back of their mind as this is something that I could do for the rest of my life. <laughs> and have you seen with the, the youth you've worked with um, I imagine it's been a struggle the last, like the kids are really fatigued and yes. have had a hard time engaging yes. in schools. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, that's like this summer, our, the summer science program is going to be all outdoors. Okay. Um, so there's some of that very difference from being stuck behind a computer screen. And yeah. so hopefully we can do something that's really hands-on and really engaging mm -hmm. and help uh, bolster the right. fatigue so that we can continue to learn and engage. Yeah, and and help them uh, with which, with what has been a really difficult time to yeah. be to be a youth. Now the rotation of the science is going to all thirty locations. Mm -hmm. um, is it something that people can also do independently, like get information at the library, go into the library, and then do at home with families? What does that look like? Um, for this one, not so much. Okay, because we're we're providing supplies. Supplies. Okay. Um, and but they're all activities that honestly you can go online and find like how to create a water mm -hmm. rocket or yeah. um, you can purchase geodes yourself or we're actually working um, with stone rose um, okay. which is a archaeological site out of Republic Washington oh, interestingly enough very cool. and they're supplying us with um, fossils um, that kids can look at that's super cool but they're also open uh, like a site that's open you can go up and mm -hmm. dig for fossils yourself okay so like there are opportunities for um, to do stuff on your own as well. So look online, I imagine, yes. for when the science uh, is happening at yes. each library. Yes. Um, obviously, can also learn and replicate some of this if you're um, doing some independent activities with yeah. families. Um, what else would you say to people watching today as far as just checking out resources at the library. You've got a new library here in Wenatchee. Yes, absolutely. But, but what does the future of libraries look like? Yeah, so we're in the process right now of a what we're calling a refresh. Okay. Um, we're trying to bring our libraries into the current time. Okay. Um, so not only are we going beyond just your uh, traditional idea of libraries that are books and um, you know, a building, but we yeah. have online resources. We actually now have a collection called the Library of Things, mm. which include um, Wi-Fi hotspots, um, telescopes, nature backpacks that you can check out. We have Discover Passes, so you can get out into your state parks. Um, we have actually Omi Garden Passes as well. Um, That's amazing. Yeah. Um, because so much of going back to equity, which we mentioned earlier, there's a lot of financial barriers to yeah. some of the um, supplemental education things. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and so for families, a, even a parking pass at the park might yeah. not fit the budget this summer. It's, absolutely. But you can solve that. Yeah. <laughs> and we have like 50 of them in our system. <laughs> okay. So please check them out. Check them out. <laughs> <laughs> and go visit a librarian. If you need support, tell us a little bit about the librarians and you know, you can walk in the building, right? And yes, get, absolutely. And they'll get you situated. And our staff is friendly and welcoming, <laughs> and we can't wait to see people again after yeah. two plus years <laughs> of not being able to engage with our communities. Yeah. Our, our our librarians are really excited to dive back into building a strong sense of community. That's incredible. Well, thank you for all the work you do. I do, I, I had a list here of some things that they're, they're doing magic tricks and secrets, mm -hmm. how to draw animals, Science Beyond the Beaten Path, um, including um, teen events uh, yeah. this summer, um, story times, crafting, team time, yoga, and more. Mm -hmm. So, so much happening at the library yeah. this summer. Yeah. yeah, so it's part of our summer library program, and yeah. that's all 
you can find all of that at our on our website. Um, then your local library will also have their event calendar with everything. Awesome. And if you are watching today and don't have Wi-Fi at home, you just check, you know, seeing this program, you know, um, out and about in the community, online, just come in person. I'm sure they can give you yes. a schedule and print all Absolutely. this information out for you. Awesome. Well, Ash, thanks so much for coming Thank on so air. Much, Thank you to our audience for tuning in. We uh, will be back uh, right after this for one final uh, check-in. Thanks again to Ash Kuntz from NCW Libraries for joining us on the air today to share about her passion for STEM education and the incredible programs they have at NCW Libraries. We mentioned a few things on air, which I thought I'd spend a little bit more time on. One, NCW Tech Alliance. If you have not seen the show before, uh, NCW Tech Alliance uh, produces a network TV. We're a 501c3 nonprofit that's passionate about supporting technology, entrepreneurship, and STEM education. So what a highlight today to have a guest really uh, leaning into that mission. I also referenced the Apple STEM Network. Again, the Apple STEM Network is a collective uh, impact model. Uh, we've got a team of about 20 leaders across North Central Washington who are trying to support STEM education from early learning all the way up into career. There's five different objectives under the Apple STEM Network, and you can learn more about um, our organization, our, our goals and passion at applestemnetwork.com. It's been such a joy to be on air with you again at the NCW Life Studio. We'll be back. Since 1999, NCW Tech Alliance has served as our regional hub for technology innovation. As a 501c3, their nonprofit mission is to connect people and technology resources to create a thriving community. You can network with the team and guests from today's show by visiting them at www.ncwtech.org.